consider myself a very materialistic person. I'm really not. Uh, but as my family will certainly attest, I come from a long line of warriors. Mostly from my father's side of the family. You know, people who obsessively plan can also have a tendency to worry about their plans uh, coming to fruition. And boy, do I fit that description. Things need to be just the way I plan them. Now, I have to say that I really don't worry about money very much. Certainly not all the time, I don't. But, you know, uh, it does cause some concern in my life, just like anybody else, uh, especially now being on a fixed income. You know, somebody offered me a million dollars, no strings attached, I would certainly accept it. You know? Any takers? No? I didn't think so. You know, think of all the, the, the security and the comfort, um, all the benefit uh, for our family, what we could pass on to our children. I mean, certainly that would be nice. We human beings are anxious. We're troubled. We're fearful about many things in going wrong in our lives. We worry about food. We worry about clothing. We worry about housing. We worry about security. A whole list of things, medical care. Jesus tells us that too much concern for these things can lead us to serving mammon. Now, today that can seem like a strange word, mammon. What is that? It's an Aramaic word, the language Jesus spoke with his disciples. And it, mean, it stands for money and possessions, wealth, and all, everything that money can buy. Now, Jesus doesn't condemn money or possessions, you know, he's misquoted uh, so many times. People say that Jesus said in the gospel that money is the root of all evil. No, he never said that. He said the love of money, mammon, that's the root of all evil. Uh, and so money has its place. You know, it's good for us to plan and to make preparations. We need to be ready for the future. But we also need to set our priorities and our goals in proper order. They should relate to the values that Jesus taught us in the gospel, not the values of this world. We need to ask ourselves, for example, uh, what are we really here for? What are we living for? Where is God in our lives? Where is God in our decisions in life? You ever seen the bumper sticker that was very popular there for a while that said, the one who dies with the most toys wins? Like, what is that all about? Really? That's, that's, that's the measure of, of success? We need to trust in God and in God's loving providence for our lives. Do we really believe this? Do we really trust that God is involved in our lives and is uh, taking care of us? Do I believe that God will supply my needs? Not necessarily all my wants, but my needs. Do we really believe that although God's love is reflected in the love that our family and friends have for us, that God's love for us is even greater than that? Do we dare to believe that? My friends, God calls us today to an intense realism and to self-examination. For all our worrying, Jesus says none of it really changes the span of our days. Everything, every single day, is a precious gift from God. St. Paul says in the second reading that God will disclose the purposes of every heart. So we cannot serve both God and mammon. We must choose one or the other. Our faith, our trust in God, cannot be partial. We must put our trust in God and in God's purposes and not let ourselves be shaken by anxiety. You know, one of my wife's favorite expressions to me when I start to get anxious about something and she'll just say, don't you fret, don't you fret. Today, resolve to seek God's kingdom first. That's what Jesus says. Seek God's kingdom first and its righteousness and all other things will be given you besides. 
Be confident that you are a beloved daughter or son of God. Our Father will never forsake you. In the first reading, we hit a beautiful uh, verse from Isaiah. You know, even, even though um, the world and people will forsake, can forsake you, uh, even if a mother forsakes her child, God will not forsake us. That doesn't mean that we'll never make plans or strive to achieve them. We certainly should. But it does mean that we realize that we need to ask God what God wants first. We need to say with Jesus, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus says today that we should not be in love with money or what it can give us. That's very clear. But, Lord, you know, you decide to bless me with a little more, that'd be okay too. 